you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in a court of law. We all know our Miranda rights from our favorite crime TV shows. Like Law and Order. <laughs> but did you know that they exist because of a case in Arizona? Hello, and welcome back to another episode of AZ Unveiled. I'm Emily, your resident obsessive researcher and fourth-gen Arizonan. This week, I'm trying something a little bit different, and you can let me know if you love it or hate it. I've compiled an arbitrarily chosen number of Arizona fun facts for you. The number of them is arbitrary, not the facts themselves. Though the use of the word fun is subjective here. But anyway, let's get into them. In 1963, Ernesto Arturo Miranda was arrested for kidnapping and sexual assault based on circumstantial evidence. He was interrogated by the police for hours without legal representation because he had no idea he was entitled to it. Eventually, he confessed to the crimes, was convicted, and sent to prison. This didn't sit well with the U.S. Supreme Court, though, because this case defied the Sixth Amendment of the Constitution, giving everyone the right to legal assistance from an attorney when arrested for a crime. It also defied the Fifth Amendment, which states that no person shall be forced to serve as a witness against themselves. So, in 1966, the Supreme Court voted in a 5-4 split that the police must make all suspects aware of these rights upon arrest, and they became known as the Miranda Rights. As for Ernesto, his confession was thrown out and he was given a new trial. The very first drive through McDonald's is in Arizona. The Fort Huachuca Army Base in Sierra Vista, Arizona is home to the very first drive through McDonald's. The fort had strict rules about soldiers not being seen in uniform while off base, making it difficult for them to go out to eat for lunch. So, McDonald's franchise owner David Rich came up with a solution. He cut a hole in the wall of his restaurant oh, yeah. and put in a window and an intercom, allowing the soldiers to grab their food without ever having to leave their car. This first drive through McDonald's was opened in January of 1975. And while you can still visit a McDonald's at this location, it's not the original building. They do have some memorabilia on display from the original building though, including the original Ronald McDonald intercom. But if you'd like to see the window itself, it's about a mile and a half down the road at the Henry F. Hauser Museum. The largest contiguous ponderosa pine forest is in Arizona. I know pine forests aren't really what comes to mind when tourists think of Arizona, but we actually have the largest contiguous forest of ponderosa pine in the world. Ponderosa pines are tall coniferous trees known for their distinctive orange red bark. They generally grow to around 100 to 160 feet in height and four feet in diameter. Our ponderosa pine forest covers a massive 2.6 million acres from Arizona's east border along New Mexico all the way to the south rim of the Grand Canyon. Arizona has the world's first international dark sky city. Now just what is a dark sky community you may ask? I thought you might. According to darksky.org, a dark sky community is a community that has shown exceptional dedication to the preservation of the night sky through outdoor lighting ordinances, education, and citizen support. And on October 24th, 2001, Flagstaff, Arizona became the very first international dark sky city. Now, Arizona has 19 dark sky communities. So come give us a visit for some of the best stargazing. Arizona has the most species of rattlesnakes. In a somewhat unsettling fact, Arizona has a concerning 13 different species of rattlesnake, more than any other single state in the country. Even more exciting, these include a number of species that are considered to be among the deadliest rattlesnakes, like the Mojave rattlesnake, the tiger rattlesnake, and of course the western diamondback rattlesnake. And to piggyback off of that fun fact, Arizona is also home to one of only two species of venomous lizards found in the U.S. And that, of course, is our Gila monster. Not only is the Gila monster one of the only venomous lizards in the U.S., it also happens to be the largest lizard native to the U.S. So that's fun. It was named after the Gila River Basin, where it was discovered in the late 1800s. Okay, I'll give you a much cuter Arizona animal fact, and that is that Arizona also has more species of hummingbird than any other state in the U.S. 
According to azstateparks.com, Arizona is home to at least 17 different species of hummingbird, most of which can be found in southeastern Arizona. Some sources tie us with Texas as having the most hummingbird species, as a lot of the species do migrate through western Texas as well, but you know what? This isn't about them. Now, Tombstone, Arizona may be most famous for Wyatt Earp and the shootout at the OK Corral. Get home. But it is also the unlikely record holder for the world's largest rose bush. The bush started as a small cutting planted by a Scottish immigrant in 1885, which she took from her plant back home in Scotland. Despite the odds and the drastically different climate, the cutting not only survived, but it actually thrived and now covers a massive 9,000 square foot area today. And you can visit it at the Rose Tree Museum. Arizona is home to the world's best preserved meteor crater. About two and a half hours or so north of Phoenix, just outside of Winslow, Arizona, is Behringer Crater, more commonly known as Meteor Crater. And it is the best preserved meteor crater in the world. So just a little bit ago, about 50,000 years or so, a giant meteor estimated to be roughly 150 feet in diameter was on a collision course with the Earth. It came screaming into our atmosphere at an unfathomable 26,000 miles per hour. Does that look like a problem to you? A ball of fire heading directly towards us? Why would that be a problem? What came next was an incredibly violent collision between this solid nickel iron meteor and the Earth's crust. This created a shockwave so powerful that it obliterated everything within a several mile blast radius. The resulting crater is an incredible 700 feet deep and 4,000 feet across. The original London Bridge is in Arizona. The bridge was built in 1830 and as its name suggests, it was located in London, England, spanning the River Thames. However, with the invention of the automobile, it was no longer sturdy enough to be able to support traffic and was sold by the City of London in 1968. Arizona real estate developer Robert McCullough purchased the bridge and installed it in his newly developed Lake Havasu City as a tourist attraction. It clearly worked because Lake Havasu City now sees about 1 million tourists every year. Arizona almost didn't become a state. So going back to history class, or at least a simplified version of it, the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo ended the Mexican-American War in 1848. It also ceded 55% of Mexico's territory to the US. This included southwestern states, California, Nevada, Utah, as well as parts of New Mexico, Colorado, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Wyoming. Oh yeah, and most of Arizona, but not all of it. The United States would not get the rest of Arizona until five years later with the Gadsden Purchase in 1853. But even then, Arizona wasn't really a thing yet. It was part of the New Mexico Territory. Arizona wouldn't become its own territory until February 24th of 1863. And then in 1911, a bill was proposed to make Arizona a state. However, Taft vetoed it. According to the Library of Congress, Taft didn't like that our Constitution included a provision to recall judges. He said that it went against the need for an independent judiciary and called it legalized terrorism. But once that provision was removed from our constitution, Taft agreed to sign the statehood bill, and Arizona became the 48th state to be added to the Union in 1912. And it also happened to be the last continental state to be added. Did you know that it's illegal to cut down a saguaro cactus in Arizona? I know, I know, I'm sure you did. Everybody knows that one. But did you know that it's actually a felony to cut one down? So it's actually a class four felony in the state of Arizona to cut down a saguaro cactus. You are legally required to notify the Department of Agriculture and obtain a permit before cutting one down. Saguaros are highly protected in Arizona because they're native only to the Sonoran Desert and they're home to many different types of wildlife. Plus, bonus fun fact, saguaros can live up to 200 years. Arizona has two moon trees. What the heck is a moon tree? I thought you'd never ask. In 1971, astronaut Stuart Rusa took several hundred tree seeds of five different species, sweet gum, redwood, Douglas fir, sycamore, and la, 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 la,
lobe lolly pine? Lob lolly pine. What, 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 what? Well, anyway, he took the seeds with him on the Apollo 14 mission to the moon to test the effects of deep space on the seeds. Although technically, Rusa and his seeds never actually stepped foot on the moon. Rather, they all stayed in orbit around the moon. The seeds survived the trip and made it safely back to Earth, but unfortunately, after returning, there was some sort of mishap during the decontamination process. The container of seeds broke open and the seeds were all mixed together. But still, the Forest Service did attempt to germinate the seeds and were able to grow about 450 saplings. According to the NASA website, moon tree saplings were gifted to schools, universities, parks, and government offices, many as part of the U.S.'s bicentennial celebrations in 1976. Locations were chosen in part to ensure proper climate conditions for the respective tree species. Arizona ended up with two of these trees. One is in Tucson at the University of Arizona. It is a sycamore tree planted fittingly by the Kuiper Space Sciences building. The other was a Douglas fir tree sent to Flagstaff. It was planted at Francis Short Pond where Flagstaff Junior High was located at the time. Unfortunately, this tree did not survive, but I believe its plaque is still there. If you know, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I will make a trip up there at some point to find out. Well, that's going to wrap up my list of fun facts for you this week. So again, let me know if you loved it, hated it, never want to see it again. But if you do want more Arizona history or fun facts or ghost stories and or true crime in your life, please like and subscribe. It helps this channel grow so that I can make more videos for you. Lastly, all of the fun facts that I mentioned in this video that involve locations are places that you can actually visit. So I put together a list of them for you with the visiting information and I will link that below. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I'm Emily and this is AZ Unveiled. I'll see you next time.